Welcome back to ASEAN News with me, Vanessa. Australian woman jailed in Bali for dead of policemen walks free from a prison of Bali. An Australian Sarah Connor walks free from a prison of Indonesia holiday island of Bali after serving time for her role in the death of a traffic policeman on a popular surfing beach in 2016. She left the prison amid tight security and covers with a headscarf before heading to a local immigration centre in a car. Connor's lawyer says she is expected to return to Australia. Connor receives a five-year sentence but was released more than a year early. I think everybody who will be released will be very happy, yeah. uh, uh, especially when she wants to be the family. But I don't know about the next plan. I just uh, try to assist her today to immigration. Connor and her British boyfriend, David Taylor, both received jail sentences in the death of police officer Wayan Sudarsa, whose body was found on Kuta Beach with wounds to his head and neck. Fritz Australian woman Sarah arrives at the immigration office before flying home. An Australian woman released from prison arrives at a local immigration office to process a paperwork before leaving the country. She was jailed in March 2017 together with British man David Taylor for their roles in the death of the traffic policeman whose body was found on a popular Kuta beach with neck and head wounds. The permit on her passport has not been checked, and to do that, it's under the jurisdiction of immigration, so we need to submit her passport to immigration. The authorities of immigration will decide whether to deport her or hand the case over to the embassy. Connor receives a five-year sentence but was freed 30 months short of her full term due to good behavior. Wearing a headscarf and she did not comment as she arrived at the local immigration office while she walks through a scrum of photographers and into a room at the immigration facility. Connor's lawyer says she will return to Australia. During a trial that attracted significant attention in Indonesia and Australia, the defendants both denied murder and says a fight broke out over Connor's missing purse. Connor had testified that she saw Taylor beating the policeman, but the judge ruled that she had held the victim down while he was being struck. Malaysian police chief says Al Jazeera staff questioned as witnesses, not suspects. Six employees of news broadcaster Al Jazeera are questioned by Malaysian police over a documentary on the arrest of undocumented migrants that authorities accuse of being inaccurate, misleading and unfair. Rights groups have raised concerns over crackdowns on media freedoms under Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yashin government, as well as rising anger toward foreigners who accuse us of spreading the coronavirus and burdening state resources. Abdul Hamid Badur, National Police Chief, tell to reporters that Al Jazeera staffs were called in after authorities determined its documentary contained elements that can investigate under the country's sedition criminal and communications law. Jadi kita telah pun diarah untuk menjalankan sesatan. Dan kita menjalankan sesetan memanggil mereka. Pada hari ini, enam orang telah... So we were asked to investigate and we carried out our investigation by calling them in. Six people came today and the seventh will be coming in this evening or tomorrow. This last one was the person who uploaded the video. They are coming in as witnesses, not suspects. Mereka bukannya suspect. In a statement, Al Jazeera called on Malaysia to withdraw the criminal probe, saying it stood by the professionalism, quality and impartiality of its journalism. The editor-in-chief of Malaysia Kini arrives in court to face contempt proceeding of Malaysian news portal. Stephen Gann, editor of Malaysia Kini, a leading independent Malaysian news portal, arrives in court to face contempt proceedings over readers' comments in a case that has been widely seen as a blow to press freedoms. Uh, yeah. Well, this is round two. So, you know, the round one we lost. So, knockout, city back, uh, 7-0. Uh, we don't think, uh, we, you know, you know uh, we'll, we'll see what our chances. Uh, we'll just, you know, uh, we expect the worst, but hope for the best. Uh, and, uh, you know, despite all this, I think we're going to go in there and give it our all. All right, thanks a lot. Malaysia Kini denies wrongdoing and saying that the publication cannot be responsible for readers' comments. Right groups accuses Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yashin's government of stifling dissent after a series of clampdowns launched against critics of the new administration. The hearing against Malaysia Kini comes days after six employees of Qatar-based broadcaster Al Jazeera 
questioned by police over a documentary on Malaysia's detention of undocumented migrants during the coronavirus pandemic. Malaysia's federal court announces the decision over a contempt case against the editor-in-chief of the leading independent news portal will delay. Stephen Gan, the editor of Chief of Malaysia Kini, appears in court to face contempt proceedings over religious comments on its website that were critical of Malaysia's judiciary in a case that has been widely seen as a test for press freedoms. A decision will be made, uh, will be announced another day to be set. So basically, we just wait for the uh, decision. That uh, we'll, you know, they haven't set a date for that yet. So we'll see. Lah. Okay. Can you comment? Thanks. I cannot. I cannot okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Sorry. Eh? Nevertheless, Surendra Anand's Malaysia Kini lawyer says there is no evidence of intentional publication. Instead of the person making a comment, it will have a chilling effect because it can affect all host content providers, such as Facebook, Google, Block Runners, who provide facilities for third parties to upload information. So there is no evidence of intentional publication. Uh, and for contempt, uh, you shouldn't be going for uh, the messenger of the person making the comment. So in this case, we have divulged the information we have about the five people who posted the comments to the police. The information is that. Uh, well, I would say, it, uh, like submitted in court, it would have a chilling effect uh, because it would affect all uh, host content providers, uh, Facebook, Google, blog runners, who, who provide facilities for third parties to upload information. Um, and those people would be implicated by this decision, uh, whatever the decision. Malaysia's federal court, the country's highest tribunal, says that its panel of seven judges need more time to deliberate on the issue of the case. An Indonesian flash floats kill 16 people and displaces hundreds to a district. The officials at the country's disaster mitigation agency says flash floats and landslides killed 16 people and displaced hundreds in the district on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi. Raditya Jati, a spokesman for the National Disaster Mitigation Agency, says search and rescue officials are still looking for 23 people missing after the flood struck the North Luwu district of South Sulawesi province. Handout footage from the National Search and Rescue Agency showed the rescue personnel searching for survivors in an entire town partially submerged under thick mud. Officials at a local disaster mitigation agency and search and rescue agency tell to the Reuters that heavy rains has inundated three nearby rivers for several days, prompting the evacuation of 655 people due to the floods. Indonesia frequently suffer from floods and landslides, particularly during the rainy season. Singapore's ruling People's Action Party extended rule election as opposition parties made historic inroads in a ballot under the cloud of the COVID-19 pandemic. Having held power since independence in 1965, the People's Action Party had been widely expected to win and is likely to carry Prime Minister Lee Hsiung Loon to his last victory before retirement as a national leader and People's Action Party secure 83 out of 93 seats in parliament, but the main opposition workers' party won the other 10, the most ever held by opposition lawmakers, while the People's Action Party's popular vote fell to 60% down from 70% in 2015. On the outcome of the election, the popular vote is 61.2 percent. We won 83 seats out of 93, and we have a clear mandate. But the percentage of the popular vote is not as high as I had hoped for. And we lost one GRC. Nevertheless, the result reflects broad-based support for the PAP. Singaporeans understand what is at stake and why we must come together to uphold our national interests. I'm honoured and humbled by the faith Singaporeans have put in the PAP and the heavy responsibility you have entrusted us with. I will use this mandate responsibly to deal with COVID-19 and the economic downturn and to take us safely through the crisis and beyond. At the same time, the results reflect the pain and uncertainty that Singaporeans feel in this crisis. The loss of income, the anxiety about jobs, the disruption caused by the circuit breaker and the safe distancing restrictions. This was not a feel-good election, but one where people are facing real problems and expect more rough weather to come. 
The People's Action Party's two-third majority forced them to freehand to pass legislation and amend the constitution. But its leaders will also be under pressure to address the slip in support. Lee, who held premiership since 2004, retained his seat easily. He had previously flagged his intention to step aside in coming years, but he says he will stay on the sea through the COVID-19 crisis. Ruling People's Action Party wins Singapore's general election. Tan Mengdui says the ruling People's Action Party won 83 of the 93 parliamentary seats in Singapore's general election. People's Action Party won the election with 61.24% of votes. A total of 191 candidates from 11 political parties and an independent candidate competed for 93 seats in the election, which are organized into 14 single-member constituencies and 17 groups representation constituencies. The People's Action Party won the 83 seats from the 13 single-members constituencies and 15 groups representation constituencies, while Workers' Party obtained the 10 seats from Huogang single-member constituencies, Aljunit group representation constituencies and Senkan group representation constituencies. Prime Minister Lee Shen Lung and his team won Ang Mo Kyo group representation constituencies with 71.91% of votes. The Prime Minister, also People's Action Party's Secretary General, says he is honored and humbled by the fate Singaporeans had put into the ruling party and the heavy responsibility Singaporeans had entrusted with the party and pledged to take the responsibility of leading the country safely through the COVID-19 and economic crisis. Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kiet, along with his East Coast Group Representation Constituency team member, won 53.41% of the votes. Heng moved from Tampines Group Representation Constituencies to East Coast Group Representation Constituencies this year. The People's Action Party took 83 of the 89 seats in the 2015 election with 69.86% of the popular votes, which was higher than the 60.14% gain in 2011. As Heng warns, pandemic has hit South China Sea Talks. The Vietnamese Prime Minister and Chairman of the 2020 Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit, Nguyen Xuan Phuc, tell a news conference the COVID-19 pandemic interrupted discussion about the disputed of South China Sea. Concluding the 36th ASEAN Summit, Phuc says the handling of the pandemic and offered recovery assistance and expertise. Và Hoa Kỳ là những đối tác quan trọng hàng đầu của quốc gia trên thế giới, trong đó có ASEAN và Việt Nam. Both China and the U.S. are the most important partners of many countries worldwide, ASEAN and Vietnam included. Therefore, a competition between China and the U.S. will have an effect globally and on ASEAN as well. However, there are currently many economic cooperation frameworks between ASEAN, China and the U.S., both bilateral and multilateral. This is an important foundation to maintain and strengthen the economic cooperation between ASEAN and these two countries. ASEAN always wishes to have stability, peace, prosperity and cooperation in the Asia-Pacific region and surely we do not want to have to pick a site. Vietnam and the Philippines warned of growing insecurity in the Southeast Asia amid concerns that China was stepping up its activity in the South China Sea. China has been pushing its presence in the exclusive economic zones in other countries. The United States called on China to stop its bullying behavior. Both Hanoi and Manila lodged protests with China after Beijing declared the creation of new administrative districts on islands in the troubled waterways, to which Vietnam and the Philippines also have competing claims. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte told ASEAN leaders alarming incident had happened in the South China Sea as the region struggled to cope with the coronavirus pandemic. Vietnam says one of its fishing boats was sunk by a Chinese maritime surveillance vessel. China says that Vietnam's claims in South China Sea are illegal and doomed to fail. Phuc also reaffirmed ASEAN's commitment to peaceful and stable Asia-Pacific region while indicating that rising tensions between China and the U.S. would negatively affect ASEAN nations' economies. Anti-epidemic operation becomes new highlight of China-Singapore ties. In a telephone conversation with Singapore Prime Minister Li Xianglong, she congratulated Li on leading the People's Action Party to victory in Singapore's general election and cooperation between China and Singapore in the fight against COVID-19 has become a new highlight of bilateral relations and he adds significant connotations to their all-round cooperative partnership. Chinese President Xi Jinping adds, China will continue to provide Singapore with firm support 
and stands ready to work with Singapore to cement global solidarity in combating the pandemic, also support the World Health Organization and jointly build a global community of health for all. Chief State noted that two countries have been helping and supporting each other and have made concerted efforts to guarantee smooth operation of supply and industrial chains in the region. Continue to deepen reform and opening up, improve the domestic business environment, and hopes that the Singaporean site will provide sound conditions for Chinese enterprises doing business in the country. She says this year marks the 30th anniversary of China and Singapore diplomatic ties, that the bilateral relationship is standing at the new historical starting point so as to deepen public support for their friendship. Singapore stands ready to work with China to safeguard free and open trade and keep supply and industrial chains in the region, which participation of Chinese enterprises in its economic construction. Bilateral cooperation in the fight against COVID-19 once again demonstrated that the relationship between the two countries is foresighted, strategic and exemplary. Well, thank you for today. We'll see you again.